This week, I am in Cape Town to try to find out what Wicca is all about. Wicca was founded in the 1940s by British civil servant Gerald Gardner. At the time, he believed that it was a return to the pagan, matriarchal religions of prehistoric Europe. People have said that it draws its influences from multiple sources, from Victorian occultism to Buddhism to Hinduism. The thing that I find the most striking about this religion is that Wiccans believe that God has a dual nature, that God is both male and female. And Wiccans place a heavy emphasis on goddess worship. Now, for those who don't know, Wiccans refer to themselves as witches. Now, in my culture, if you call yourself a witch, that has some heavy, hectic, negative connotations. But I'm ignorant. I've only ever been exposed to these people at flea markets when they're dressed in their robes, selling their stuff. And at the risk of sounding totally offensive, um, I've always had the perception that this is like a fringe indulgence for people who have more time and more money than they know what to do with. But by my own admission, I am an ignoramus. What I do know is that this is one of the fastest growing religions in South Africa. At the moment, there are over 50,000 South Africans who are practicing this religion. An important part of any spiritual faith is having a sense of community. And today I have the privilege of being at the home of the arch priestess of the Circle of the African Moon. Her name is Donna Darkwolf. And I'm here to witness a ritual honoring womanhood and honoring the phases of being a woman. I'm told that this is a very sensitive ritual, a very tender ritual, so this is really a privilege for me. And I welcome you to the circle. And I purify you in the name of the God and the Goddess. I cast the circle in time without time, in a place that is not a place. Guardians of the Watchtowers of the East, great spirits of Earth, we humbly ask you to join us today and blow with your winds of change and breathe your airs of intellect into us. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. Great Goddess, she who is manifested in many facets, as the maiden, the mother, the crone, the waning moon, the waxing moon, the full moon. I invoke and I beseech you to be in our circle, to bring in that mother energy as we honor women today in all stages of their life. Blessed be thy feet that have brought thee in the sacred way. Blessed be thy knees that shall kneel at the sacred altar. Blessed be thy womb from whom we have come. Blessed be thy breasts that have been formed in beauty. Blessed be thy lips that shall speak the sacred names. Please walk me through the ritual, like its significance, what was the purpose of the ritual, and what was the purpose of each step, and the symbolism as well, because there was very powerful symbolism. Yeah. The first step is what we call our purification, which is where we ready ourselves to spiritually enter the circle. And then you saw me anointing people with oil. That was to open up their third eye and to create a platform of receptivity for them to give of themselves and to receive. And then we do what we call a circle casting, where the circle is cast to contain any good energies. We don't want our good energies to leak out, as it were, and to ensure that nothing bad enters it. And it's to create a timeless space in which we can now say goodbye to the problems of the world and focus entirely on the divine task ahead. Mm -hmm. Then, in traditional Wicca, we call upon or invoke or ask or beseech the quarters, which is um, earth, air, fire and water. You saw Gary do what is known as the fivefold kiss. Mm -hmm. It's very intimate and very tasteful, where he blesses my feet that have walked in the ways of the goddess, and he blesses my knees that have knelt at her altar, and he blesses the womb from which we have come, and he blesses my breasts, which are a thing of beauty to men, 
to, to heterosexual men in mm. any event. <laughs> and he blesses my lips, which shall speak her sacred name. Please explain to me the significance of, of Wicca in South Africa at the moment. I think Wicca represents an alternative for really spiritually seeking people. Some people are desperate spiritually. They don't have a home in the mainstream religions anymore. And certainly when we speak of Christianity, it is not a home for people that have independent spirits and individual spiritual quests. Why do you say that? Because it's about conversion and it's about fear-based domination and it's about rule and it's about patriarchy essentially. Mm -hmm. And Wicca's appeal to people is the balance between male and female or essentially the going back to honoring the goddess within and men finding um, a relationship with the mother goddess. And this has a tremendous appeal for people who are tired of a patriarchal god. That's something that could make people very afraid, you know, because yes. on the outside, I mean, especially when you come from a culture like Christianity or, you know, other other monotheistic religions, you look at, well, I was raised, you know, to look at God as a man. Absolutely. So to suddenly see all this feminine symbolism and to hear people talking about God as a woman, it's quite, it's a radical shift, Absolutely. you know. Both male and fe uh, female in the Wiccan religion resi reside as equal consorts. They have equal power. They are equally necessary to the other. The one cannot function without the other. And I think that this balance in Wicca is also very appealing to people. Donna said that Wicca attracts people who have been wounded by mainstream religion. People who are independent thinkers, you know, very intelligent people who, who are looking for information that speaks to them, but also people who feel like mainstream religion has somehow, you know, made them invisible. And I can agree. If I look at a figure like Jesus, for example, I can see the beauty and the divinity and the compassion. But when I look at Christianity as a whole, I don't see anything that represents the divinity in me as a woman. Mignon Dawson is a 22-year-old BBA student who describes herself as an eclectic pagan and as a Wiccan. Her family practices a completely different religion. So I want to find out from her, like, what is it like, you know, having a different religion to your family? How do they accommodate her in the same house? Hello! <laughs> As used to be so ghetto, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I don't expect anything less. <laughs> Mignon, thank you for talking to me. It is appreciated for letting me into your sanctuary. This is new for me, <laughs> as you can see. Please explain to me, like, what was the process? How did you, how did you find this, this religion, or how did it find you? Okay, I was at, in high school, standard eight, and a girlfriend of mine was practicing Wicca. And I just, as most teenagers do, thought that it was such a cool thing. And then I started buying books on Wicca specifically mm -hmm. and practicing. And so that's basically how I got started. What faith is your family? My family is predominantly Roman Catholic. Yo, yeah. that is a radical departure there, my yes, sister. But I'm still, I still have very strong ties with the Roman Catholic faith. I mean, I've got the Madonna on my... Uh, altar. That's what I'm noticing as well is like there's a lot of different things from different sources like that's where the eclecticism comes in. Eh? Yes. So so Wicca, Wicca allows for you to draw from multiple influences. Yes well Wicca basically has two liturgies the um, Wiccan Creed and the Charge of the Goddess and that is it. Um, so basically from there on every Wiccan chisels for themselves their own faith. So it's like a very personalized religion. religion. Like you are essentially kind of finding your own path yes. within this community. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me ask. Let me just get all the yeah. all the all the demons out of the way. Do you play with demons? No. I'm scared of demons. Do you use muti on people? Do you hoi muti in people's food and hoi it in their drinks? I I can't cook to save my life. So <laughs> if you call bad cooking muti, then <laughs> yes. But other than that, no. Do you ride a broom? <laughs> I would wish I rode a broom, my broom, but I don't think I could find a broom that would support my weight. <laughs> this is my broom. Now, if this broom can support my weight, my broom, I'm riding it. No, but we're going to have a problem. Because <laughs> I think this broom is going to go snap, because I'm a big girl. 
Jeg ved det. It's not supporting anything. Oh, I barely help sweeping. So all of the perceptions that we have about what this 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 Wicca means, you know, all these all these like negative preconceptions that we have are coming from somewhere else. It's not based on the reality. It's coming from fairy tales. Okay. Um. What you then need to think about is all the preconceptions we have about everything. Is it based in reality? Um, white people have preconceptions about what black people are like. Mm -hmm. um, black people have preconceptions about what white people are like. Mm -hmm. Straight people have preconceptions about what gay people are like. I mean, we've all got preconceptions about what people are like, and most of them are not based in reality. What I loved about talking to Mignon, other than the fact that she's like bold, loud and proud, is that I got the real sense that being a Wiccan means that you are on your own personal journey. You are creating your own personal religion, which I like. More than anything, I'm feeling like I can identify more with this religion, better than I could when I walked in. I'm back at Donna Darkwolf's house today to get a bird's eye view into practical magic. Donna is going to prepare a dish for camera, but the dish is for her man. So there's like feelings of love and all kinds of things that are gonna be infused into this dish. And I get a chance to understand what spells and magic and all of that is about. Basically, I'm going to be making a meal for my lover. Mm -hmm. um, this is a love spell, I suppose one could say. A love spell. This is a love spell. But now, okay, when you start talking spells and magic and stuff, I mean, that's the language of witchery that gets people scared. Like, what is a spell? What is magic? Can you break that down for me? Well, for me, a spell is prayer on steroids. Um, I'm going to be praying over my <laughs> meal today because everything that I do, I am making a meal for my lover and for myself with intent, with a magical intent. The intent is that a certain outcome is to be reached and the outcome is that after a while away, he's been in Johannesburg for a while, he's going to come home to a home-cooked meal which he really needs and loves and I'm going to be the one, his lover is the one that's made it. It's a simple meal, it doesn't have to be very, very complex, but the love and the passion that has been put into this meal is what he will experience and it will be manifest and um, the things in the kitchen that these are valid things right now the red roses roses are and uh, you know an, a symbol of love mm -hmm. and the red candle that's burning the pink the purple candle burns just because it goes with my day cool yeah okay <laughs> that's just the standard yeah. candle in the kitchen okay. and the temple area but the red candle is burning because you know, red is a color of passion and lust and mm -hmm. so on. Each herb and each food item is masculine or feminine. You know, really? we've, we've been talking about the divine dance between masculine and feminine. Uh -huh. Even in your kitchen, the kitchen is a male and female, a dance of balance and polarity. I'll explain to you. A simple stove uh -huh. is a sign of the masculine yeah. because it exudes warmth and light, just like the sun. And the sun we see as masculine. Okay, okay. Bowls, all sorts of bowls are receptacles. Like a cauldron. Anything, cauldron, cups, bowls, plates are receptive. They are um, receptive to receiving foodstuffs. These are feminine, they're cool. So here we have okay. a few ingredients, so simple. Garlic and onions are masculine wow. uh, foodstuffs. And they um, are, quite frankly, to do with lust. Um, You're going to use going, a lot. I'm going to be using <laughs> quite a few of these things with my intent uh, is, is to infuse, is to take out and to ingest the last aspect and of course for the lover to ingest that so as well. So now if you didn't do this consciously, if you were just cooking like I mean I use garlic and onions all the time, everybody uses garlic and onions all the time. If you're not thinking you know what I want to make my man feel excited does that energy still go into the food does it still go into him no no because this is what you are doing magically is you are consciously shifting the parameters here mm. so that when I partake of this food uh, with the person in question I will already be eating it with that conscious um, that consciousness about it do you tell your lover that you know what I'm making a dish to bring us closer together tonight? Is, is that a part of the bargain or? That's a very, very uh, interesting thing that you bring up and I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. Because 
what you're bringing up is the question of ethics. Right. Um, is it ethical for you to make a dish that you intend to have certain outcomes with? Yeah. When, in fact, it may not be that person's will. Wiccans are bound by one rule only, and it goes as follows. And at harm none, do as he will. So uh, if it doesn't hurt somebody else? You can do it. And yourself. And it includes yourself. So now you put rosemary. Is that rosemary? Um, yes. I'm rosemary going to put, I'm and going to sage. Put quite a lot of rosemary and sage because rosemary is lust as well. Ow! Sage. A whole lot of lust in that part. Sage. <laughs> sage is for wishes and for success as well. Okay. So uh, my wish is that this dish is successful. I want some more garlic. <laughs> I do want some more garlic in this dish. When a meal is cooked with love, like when I've been on the road for a very long time and I've been eating at like stairs and McDonald's. All you want and is a home cooked meal. All you want is food that's made with love, you know? And you feel it. You feel you it do, in the food. You do feel it. It was nice to see practical magic in action. I didn't realize that there's like that much magic all around me. I mean, I cook using a lot of those spices and a lot of those things, and I had no idea that that was like the, the flavor that was already infused in them. Great and loving mother, without thee, I would not exist. With your strength, you have given me the strength to fight for my truth. Nathan Flykis is a 19-year-old colored young man who's involved in the Wicca Church. So I want to find out from him what his journey to the church was, how people in his community have responded to the fact that he's a Wicca, and also what place there is for his spiritual gift in this spiritual community. Nathan, how did you discover Wicca? What was your journey into this religious path? There was always a yearning and a deeper seeking for a balance within the masculine and feminine energies. Mm -hmm. And it was never really given to me in uh, the previous religion I've been in. And I've always struggled to accept the fact that there's only a male divine or a male energy. But you were man, though. Even though I'm a man, I was surrounded by females. My father passed away and um, I was surrounded by just females. Okay. And I was a um, staunch churchgoer. But yet there was something that felt that there, there was an emptiness. So you have gone from being staunch churchgoer to being a witch. Yes, to being a witch, to be you're, exact. You're, what did your church community have to say when you chose it? Well, um, I went for regular counseling with my priest and um, I spoke to him and I told him quite frankly that, um, listen, I found a community which has given me all I want. Mm -hmm. And I feel so at home, this is what I'm willing to do. And he told me, Nathan, I respect your decision because you have to find yourself, not God, but God will find you. And at that point in time, God and Goddess found me, and it gives me a balance, a balance within my feminine and my masculine side. How did people in your colored community, you know, because you know us folk of color, we've yes. got our own... We've got our structured exactly, community. Exactly, exactly. How did they deal? Well, it was difficult in the beginning. It was very difficult because, um, like I said, they are very structured. So whenever a sibling breaks from that regime, yeah. it is like, you are either bad, or you are either homosexual or bisexual, etc., etc. In the beginning, it was hard. I got, I had bouts of depression, and I thought that, why can't they accept me? Am I that different? But then as I grew into my spirituality, which helped me a lot, because it gave me the confidence, and it gave me the strength to say, but does it really matter to you because it's about me? Mm. It's not about you. If you live your life the way you want to, I won't interfere. Mm. So please don't interfere in my way of living. Mm. And um, my community, the block that I stay on, have learned tolerance. Your hips move and I can feel what they're saying. Swaying. They say the priest inside of me is gonna get you, get you, get you. Janet Austin and Matthew Jordan are a 19-year-old couple. They've been dating for three years, and both of them are Wiccan. So I'm going to talk to them to find out how Wicca is used or helps the relationship of two young people in love. How has Wicca um, affected your relationship? Um, has it changed you guys as a couple, the way that you relate to each other as a couple? The whole polarity aspects of Wicca 
uh, god, goddess, the masculine and feminine, you are able to embrace each side in yourself. And with that, being able to open up the feminine side in myself, I'm able to understand what Jan's going through, more of that. It just creates a deeper connection between us. Mm. I'm open to side. the masculine side more as well. Um, but a major thing is that it's not only a shared interest, it's a shared belief. Getting up and pouring myself a glass of juice. Hey, 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 don't talk crazy. What we're into, how we see things, so we've got a lot of things in common. Are there rituals that you guys perform together, like as a couple, to, for, to, to affect, to strengthen, or, you know, to help you guys out in your relationship when you're going through stuff? Um, well, there are, but yeah. we particularly... But you do get another thing, which is a whole other topic, sex magic. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh-uh. No. Which... Clearly, very basically, understandably, use sex and the energy from it to use that energy towards, like, a couple-directed yeah. goal. Okay. Um, exactly. But um, there's very little literature on that available, obviously. Okay. And so, but other, other than that, um, you can practice anything together, really, yeah, if you just want it to be so. between the two of you. A lot of people have this perception that, like, witches are people who, like, dress in black and long <laughs> robes and black hair and piercings and all of that. Yeah, yeah freaky, yeah. you know? Um, and I mean, you guys dress in black and, you know, are there, are there any connections or any correlations between Gothic culture and, and Wicca? With myself, wearing black, the, having piercings, has no connection whatsoever Very to Very little Wicca. to none. Little mm. to none. I mean, I have piercings because I like that way of expressing myself. What about people who look at, like, this culture from the outside and are like, whoa, Satanism, you know? I mean, that's the impression a lot of time with the... Uh, especially because the symbolism has been so Demonized. yeah, mis yeah. Mi I guess misrepresented you know um how do you guys feel about that and and I mean is there is there a connection if there isn't then please explain yeah. um Satanism and Wicca or paganism cannot be linked purely because in paganism there is no Satan there's no devil there's no concept of all evil um so they just there's no hell there's there can't be any link really is to chalice, so is male to female, and so it is that the divine masculine and the divine feminine are one true Godhead. I walked into this episode with my own stereotypes and misconceptions and fears and prejudices um, about witches. I thought I was going to meet some weirdo, like hippie fringe people who are on their own trip, you know? But what I met were very intelligent people who are searching for a pathway to God that is different to what the mainstream offers. And I can relate to that. I identify as a spiritual person, but the thing that's always made me very apprehensive about organized religion is the fact that it portrays God as this being that does not reflect me as a woman. We have carved you out of nothingness, found your place in empty space, God's eyes, God's heart, goddess, mirror of invisible grace. Religions hatched of imbalance are weakest where truth is stretched. How do I believe in God when I don't see her in myself? Give me a new set of eyes to help me see the new state of mind, the freedom.